powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. It will soon be open for business again for much of Montana, but it definitely won't be business as usual. Governor Bullock laying out the details of the reopening the Big Sky plan at a news conference this afternoon as the state begins opening again slowly, strategically and cautiously. Governor said there is reason for optimism, but not celebration, and that Montanans will continue to have to go to great lengths to protect each other because he says once we open, we want to stay open. Starting this Sunday, the stay at home order will be lifted. Now, that doesn't mean it's time for the celebratory block party or big barbecue. But come Sunday, churches will be able to open if they want. And on Monday, Main Street businesses can open their doors with a number of stipulations. Health assessments must be done on employees and physical distancing of six feet must be maintained between customers. Some of the other highlights, senior living and assisted living facilities must continue to prohibit visitors. Child care facilities, organized youth activities and outdoor recreation can open, but gyms and theaters must remain closed. Personal care, such as getting a haircut, will be possible again on Monday, but with strict guidelines. A week later, on May 4th, restaurants, bars and casinos can reopen, but with strict rules. Restaurants can operate at most at half of the regular capacity. No more than six people can sit together. And there has to be plenty of space between tables. You won't be able to sit at the bar to drink. And all customers will have to be out of the establishment during this first phase by 11.30 p.m. Schools can resume, but Bullock is leaving that up to local school boards to decide. And those traveling into the state must continue to quarantine for 14 days. I recognize that our tourism industry is hurting. But as Montanans have worked so hard to stop the spread of this virus, this first phase of reopening isn't yet the time to allow others to come into our state. As I've said before, our new normal is going to look different. Well, a number of considerations will have to be taken into account before Montana can move on to the next phase. Bullock said he's asking all Montanans to act like a loved one's life may depend on your actions. And you can see Governor Bullock's full plan for reopening, what it will look like on our website, ktvq.com. The Unified Health Command will be holding a news conference tomorrow at 1 in the afternoon, outlining Yellowstone County's plans for reopening of businesses. That press conference will be led by the Yellowstone County Health Officer John Felton. It will be televised right here on Q2, also online on KTBQ.com. Well, Governor Bullock's phased-in reopening of Montana's business community provides a blueprint to restart the state's economy. Main Street and retail businesses can open on April 27th, as we said, but they will have to meet those strict new guidelines. Now, here in Billings, Big Sky Economic Development and Riverstone Health are partnering to provide guidance to local business owners on how to develop those specific plans. Steve Arbuscow at Big Sky EDA tells Q2 the new Safe Open campaign will also include a public education effort. Arbuscow says a Friday news conference is planned to outline the specifics. Again, restaurants, bars, breweries, distilleries, and casinos will be the next businesses to open, and that'll be one week later on Monday, May 4th. Now, all this as we report two more coronavirus-related deaths this evening. Flathead County reports its second COVID-related death today, and another life has been lost in Toole County, bringing the total there to six now. Across the state, 14 people have died, and two new confirmed cases are reported. This brings the total in the state to 439. More than half of those individuals have now recovered 296. Well, students, teachers, and parents all across the state have been waiting in anticipation to find out how their school year will end. Governor Bullock today marking May 7th, two weeks from tomorrow, the defining day. Now, Bullock has opted to give that control and decision to local school districts. Q2's Mitch Leggy joins us now with what that means for Billings. Mitch. Governor Bullock said he plans to give local control to local school boards as to the decision on whether or not to reopen for the remainder of the school year. In an update video today, Billings School District 2 Superintendent Greg Upham said he would like that decision made as soon as possible. Judging from the comments on School District 2's social media, parents and students in Billings are anxious for a decision. This as some students have struggled to learn in an online classroom. 
At a school board meeting Monday, Superintendent Upham said that he does not support returning students to the classroom. Upham reasoned that the risk for disease spread is too great because social distancing isn't practical for 19,000 billing students and teachers. And again, Upham said that he would like the decision on whether or not to bring students back to be reached as soon as possible. But it's in school board trustees' hands now. Reporting at home in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, thanks, Mitch. And as for Billings High School graduation ceremonies, Upham says those are still up in the air. The Billings Catholic School said in a letter to students and parents today that they will survey and evaluate before making a final decision on if students will return to the classroom on May 7th. The graduation date will remain May 24th, but details of that event will be released at a later date. Smaller school districts may find it easier to comply with social distancing if they choose to bring kids back to the classroom, but some have already made the decision to close for the remainder of the school year. Lockwood Schools announced Monday it would close. Today, Pioneer Elementary School north of Billings also made the decision to close. The Huntley Project Superintendent tells Q2 administrators are weighing options, should have a decision made by by Tuesday, schools in Laurel and Shepherd have not yet decided. Well, the governor's directive allows for worship strict with strict physical distancing protocols. Q2's David Jay talked with some congreg congregation leaders about their plans for worship this weekend. After weeks of online services, church leaders in Montana say they're ready for worship on Sunday. Governor Steve Bullock issued a directive allowing places of worship to become operational with physical distancing protocols. We're very thankful that he has allowed churches to meet in groups of more than 10 as long as strict guidelines are in place. Pastor Terry Forkey, president of the Montana District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, helped write a letter for the Montana Pastors Network to the governor. The Southern Baptist Church, the Free Evangelicals, and several individual churches were among those signing the letter. There's 166 uh, some churches that signed the letter to the governors. I'm in no way empowered or even inclined to speak for all of them. However, I think they're at least in general agreement that they would follow these guidelines. Catholic churches in Billings could also be holding services on Sunday. A number of the pastors I've talked to are just really ready to find a way to open up their churches. The bishop expects St. Patrick's and the other Catholic churches to do services in person. And he says it's quite important to bring the congregation together. People need to gather together. For Catholics, you know, it's, it's really the Mass is it's, it's just vitally important. Individuals that are gathered by the Holy Spirit as they're called to faith. In, in Jesus, and so they meet as the body of Christ. It's always going to be better to be able to do something in person. The rabbi says Congregation Beth Aaron is not ready to open for services on Friday or Saturday. It's a very important cornerstone of Judaism that health and safety is absolutely paramount over just about anything else. In Billings, David J, MTN News. All right, thanks, David. The church leaders mentioned distancing and cleaning and also expect that those who are at high risk may choose not to attend right away. Among some of the downtown businesses more than ready to open their doors this coming Monday are hair salons. Q2 spoke with the manager of Bishop's Cuts in Color, Katrina Erb, who says only 30 minutes after Governor Bullock's news conference this afternoon, the calls for appointments came flooding in. Bishops will limit the number of customers in the shop to 10 people at a time and employees will stagger their schedules. I, I can't imagine what my staff is dealing with right now, but within half an hour of the announcement that we could open Monday, I had about 75 messages from clients um, asking if they could get in, if I could book them today, like what my schedule looks like. Getting to the point I could use a haircut myself. The uh, shop will also uh, stick, uh, stick to strict cleaning and sanitation guidelines. Well, as Montana works to rebound for the impact of the coronavirus, organizations like Family Promise of Yellowstone Valley are answering the call, making sure some of our tiniest neighbors are covered. Since the pandemic hit, the demand from their community diaper bank has doubled, so they added a mobile diaper bank to their schedule. Anyone in need of diapers, wipes, or baby formula can pick up those items from their location on South 26th Street on Tuesdays. Wednesdays are reserved for scheduled home deliveries, and on Thursdays, the bank travels to different elementary schools in the Billings community. The development coordinator was a guest on Montana this morning to talk about their latest efforts. It is um, so heartwarming to see the, you know, the Billing Strong community coming together and all working together and making sure that no one's left behind and we'll get through this. And um, the important of, importance of togetherness 
and that community response just warms my heart every day. And it seems like in crisis, that shines so much more. Promise can be reached at 294-7432. If help is needed, they are also accepting donations. And you can catch all of the stories in the Rebound series on our website, ktvq.com. We will be running these stories every weekday as we highlight the efforts of Montana businesses as they get back on their feet. Well, tonight the UN is warning that the pandemic is putting the world at risk of widespread famine, famines of biblical proportions. There are growing concerns about food supplies in this country, especially in America's meat industry. This as an explosion of coronavirus cases is forcing some meat packing plants to shut down. CBS's Janet Chamblian has the story. A major pork processing plant is the latest to close. Tyson Foods in Waterloo, Iowa, where 2,800 workers process nearly 20,000 hogs a day. It comes after an outbreak of at least 180 COVID-19 cases there and after Iowa lawmakers filed an OSHA complaint, even though the state's governor resisted. We can work with different uh, processing facilities across the state to keep the processing plants up and going. A USA Today investigation found 150 of the nation's largest plants are in counties where the infection rate is spiking, threatening not only workers, but potentially the food supply. Any plant or factory across the country could become the number one hotspot next week uh, if they do not take this issue seriously. Processing plants can be a breeding ground for the virus because many workers spend their day side by side. This man, who recovered from COVID-19 and asked we not use his name, works at Smithfield Foods in South Dakota. We are very close. We can use a social distance at that place. Tonight, there is increasing concern about the supply of meat and poultry. The Agriculture Department reports beef production is already down 19 percent from a year ago. Are we going to be going through a meat shortage in the United States? You know, you may not get the exact product that you want when you go to the store, but we do not expect, I would not expect uh, a protein shortage. And Tyson has now announced it is closing yet another of its plants, this time in Indiana. Here in Texas, public health officials are investigating outbreaks at two rural processing plants where resources and hospitals are thin. Janet Shanley and CBS News, Houston. All right, turning now to Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire. And Bob, tonight we're taking a look back at winter. We didn't see much snow here in Billings, but different story in the mountains. Oh, yes, it was an amazingly dry winter here in Billings. In fact, we went back to 2015. Let me show you what we discovered when it comes to precipitation totals. Check this out. Now, here's the way it looked. Uh, it was very dry for us. You see 2019, 2020, we had 4.18 inches of precipitation. That includes melted snow and rain and all of that stuff. And that's the driest since 2014, 2015. So very dry across the Billings area. So where did all the snow go? Well, we found it. It's up in the mountains. Take a look at this. Your snowpack in the, bear, the upper Yellowstone Valley, 120% of normal. Elsewhere in west central Montana, 118 to 124% of normal. The driest spot was still 100% of normal. That's in the southwest corner of the state. The big winter, that's up by Haver. They are 161% of normal when it comes to snowpack and water equivalent. Been a lot of moisture up in the north and also out in the west. Anyway, our forecast looks like it'll be dry for the weekend. We'll chat about that in a few more minutes. All right, thank you, Bob. We now know the name of the pilot who died in Monday morning's plane crash just north of Billings. Sheriff Mike Linder says 64-year-old Lloyd Gerber of Billings died when the PA-31 Piper twin engine airplane went down after it took off from Billings Logan International Airport. That crash happening on the Billings Rodden Gun Club property. Linder says investigators have finished up at the scene and cleanup is now underway. Well, still to come on tonight's Q2 10 o'clock news, the pandemic has hit everyone differently. We'll hear from one Montana farmer who's now seeing his business skyrocket with record sales. Plus, airports around the state are being helped by the CARES Act, but it's also raised some questions. We'll explain. And in sports, the spring high school sports season officially wiped away by COVID-19. Scott will have the details. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.